Hello everyone, this is Jim Ogrzynski with your week 14 lecture video. So I just want to begin this video to remind everybody that I am reviewing your first drafts and offering feedback and we have comments and suggested edits. Um, I have made a copy of your first draft and I'm holding that in a folder away from the normal course folder. I just do not want to interfere with the peer review process. So uh, once I have completed review, my review and feedback, and I grade your first draft in the comments section in the grade center, I will uh, copy and paste the GDoc link to my copy of that draft that has my comments. So in the grade center, all you have to do is find that link, highlight, right click, it should take you immediately to the first draft with my comments in another tab and you should be able to view all my comments. If you have an issue with this, I know this actually works. Several students have confirmed with me about the comments in on their particular uh, first draft. So you wanna make sure you look at my comments and feedback because I will look and see if you've addressed my comments when I grade the final research essay. That being said for chapter five is all about revision. Probably gonna move away a little bit from the slide presentation and talking about the chapter and focusing in on certain revision aspects that will benefit everyone. So for this week on Friday, exercise 5.1 is due. Discussion board number 17. So it's described here in the textbook <clears throat> about selecting um, a random pages in the middle of the your draft. Mark the parts where you are a less less active author. That's where there's reports, facts, quotes, sources, or other information that belong to somebody else. And then also uh, for you to record where you're active, where you are uh, analyzing commentary, interpretation, definition, or claims are represented. And it's really a, an interesting activity because if you do, you know, at least two pages to start and then another two pages, you can see exactly the pattern that you have established um, in working with the words of others. So let's see if we can, I have a, uh, a, a draft from the um, course folder. Here's one color. This is a, let's go with blue here, source information. Okay. Um, here's some more source information here. All right, the words of others, just to give you an overview. Let's do this uh, blue again. All right, so we have that. And then we have, if we were to use this paragraph uh, where you're active, okay, let's go here. Uh, let's do green, again, climate change. Okay, so this again looks something like that is um, more active, green. And then let's finish up here, all right. Okay, and this would be a green also, right? All right. So here in this particular example, um, you've demonstrated how the, the active and non-active voice, what the pattern might be. If you run through your particular, you do about three or four pages, you'll be able to determine exactly how balanced your writing is and between the words of others and your words on the idea, you to strive for enough of context in and around your source uh, information. Um, let you know exactly where you have to add a little bit more, elaborate a little bit more. So it can be a very useful activity. And then, as it says here, using these writing prompts here, uh, look at what happens. Um, look at what happens to your, uh, what your results are and write your um, response to this as your discussion board post that it says here. So using the questions in the last two paragraphs of writing prompts, reflect on the pattern of color you find in your draft, record your thoughts as the initial post for discussion board uh, 17. I'm looking for about 300 words, a little bit more, you're thinking on that. If you want to include the a link to your uh, Google Doc, that's entirely up to you. And just include that in your particular um, discussion board post, but you can see here, if you don't want to work in your copy, I understand that. 
If you want to make another copy and leave it in your folder and you want to highlight that, that's entirely up to you. So um, that is the exercise 5.1 uh, here. It's useful in many ways of looking at how your essay is constructed. See where you need to add more and be more active, or maybe your quotes or paraphrase your information is dominating and there needs to be more you. It is an interesting activity to uh, move you along. So one item I do want to return to as an observation for um, the research essays that I have been uh, reviewing, the first drafts. Remember now, we use source material and source information to support thinking in a research essay. Oftentimes, um, everybody kind of grabs their information and kind of throws it into this first draft, all right? The sources don't drive your research essay. The first draft was an essay, so I'm looking for paragraph structure. I'm looking for topic sentences. What language is, is, you know, according to the source that begins, you know, to begin a paragraph according to the article named this by Joe Smith, that's not paragraph structure, which you're giving me as a glorified annotated bibliography, and that's not the purpose of the first draft. So I want to remind everybody that we're introducing sources. We work with authors when there are authors, all right? A MLA is author and page. We want to engage with author, authors. So if I give you feedback and say you need to engage with authors, articles don't write themselves. Articles are nothing but containers. So they contain information written by humans. So the best thing to do is engage with a human. It's an important distinction here. Words like this quote says, no, what you want to do is stay away from language like that or this source says. No, you want to engage with the author, John Smith, Mary Jones, States, and then work off of that. It's easier to have a conversation with an adult or a human than it is to have a conversation with a source, an article, or a website. Obviously, if you don't have an author, you have to talk about the article or the website. It's understandable, but oftentimes everybody is, you know, is not engaging uh, with an author when there is one. So uh, that is my number one comment that I make uh, on most of all the drafts. All right. So I'm looking for an essay that weaves between the words of others and the words of others supporting what your ideas are for um, your your topic, whatever your topic may be. All right. All right, I don't want to drone on too long for this, but exercise 5.1 is very revealing. And we'll move on more uh, later in uh, next week into local revisions when we'll talk about uh, you know, just language, vocabulary, transitional phrases, and the whatnot. All right. Um, any questions or issues, uh, send me an email.